Hello everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. When you mention tropical fish to anyone, especially if they don't actually keep them, then the fish that springs to mind tends to be these little guys. Neons have got to be the quintessential tropical fish and one of the first that really attracts the attention of new keepers. They are renowned in the hobby for being tough beginner fish and, dare I say it, a little bit common, but what are they like to keep and what kind of setup do they need? Well, neons hail from the Amazon basin and particularly around the north and western regions. There they inhabit both very soft, tannin-stained blackwater streams, but they're also found in much clearer, more neutral waters that can either be densely vegetated with lots of grasses and plants around, or they can be much more barren with more rocks, much more silt laden, perhaps just a few twigs. And this ability to adapt to many different types of environments has no doubt helped the neon to find its place in the hearts of aquarium keepers. You can keep them in a tank with just a few plastic decorations, or you can add them to an established bioscape that's richly planted. And in all honesty, so long as they have good quality water, they tend to look fantastic either way. Neons are naturally brave little fish, or not even brave, they just don't seem to be bothered by anything. If ever I need to catch mine, I usually just leave the net in the tank, and within three minutes they'll all have gone in to investigate this strange new object, and I just scoop them out. Put them in a new tank, and they might be worried for a few minutes, but you'll soon find that they accept their new home and just start looking for food. And because of this laid-back nature, even if you have a very open style of tank that other small fish might be intimidated by, neons will adapt and make themselves at home, and most importantly, they'll stay out in the open where you can enjoy them. One thing to remember though is that neons are shoaling fish, and as a minimum you should look to have at least 5-6 to six fish in a 40 litre tank, although they will always be happier with more space and a bigger shoal if you can accommodate them. They can also tolerate a wide range of different pHs, from 5 all the way up to 8, and a temperature between 23 and 27 degrees. One thing to really consider if you're thinking about keeping neons is the lighting as that beautiful blue stripe isn't just for catching your eye. In the native waters where decaying leaves and silt can really severely reduce visibility, that stripe helps the fish to keep track of each other, and under low lighting conditions, neons glow. Hence their common name, and even when the rest of their body can barely be seen in the gloom, that stripe running down their flanks reflects even the merest hint of light in this beautiful array of blues and greens. One of the reasons why they look so good in black water tanks is that they stand out even more against the dark background. But don't get me wrong, they're really beautiful in a brightly lit tank too. In fact, they're just very appealing little fish. And to continue on that theme, neons are also known for being perfect community fish, as they are very easy to keep with others, rarely if ever showing any interest in their tank mates. Even the largest male neon is only gonna reach about 1.5 inches in length, and they don't have a habit of ganging up on other fish. In fact, neons tend to just stick to themselves and form a loose sort of shoal that often splits up and then reforms as individuals go off to explore and look for food. For this reason, they can be kept with a wide range of other types of fish, from tiniest little rasboras all the way up to large discuses and other types of larger schooling fish, just not so large to eat them, obviously. They also make great dither fish if you have a shy species that likes to see other fish around before they're willing to come out. While neons have no interest in other fish, that doesn't necessarily mean they are quite so nice to each other though. Neons have a rather feisty side, and as they come to sexual maturity at around 12 weeks, you will find they will frequently squabble amongst themselves. Both males and females will spar for position within the school. This often leads to minor damage, such as nipped fins, but never anything more serious, even when they're in breeding conditions. When it comes to feeding neons, the only thing you really need to be aware of is that they only have a very, very small mouth, and so even the smallest of pellets is likely to be too large for them. And so soft, flake foods tend to be more manageable. Also be aware though that neons are greedy little fish, and females in particular seem to grossly overestimate what they can actually eat. This doesn't seem to do them any harm, but I still like to limit their access to foods like bloodworms or brine shrimp, just because I don't like to see them looking so stuffed, they look like they're going to pop. Sexing neons is relatively simple, as the males are slightly larger and much more streamlined than the females, and that blue stripe that runs down the back is much straighter on the males. 
Mature females also have a much rounder belly as they become full with eggs and that's part of the reason why the line bends. If you do have both males and females in your tank though, don't be fooled into thinking they are going to breed easily for you. If you want your neons to spawn, you will need to give them really quite specific situation. Even captive raised ones used to living in aquariums still need a combination of dim lighting, a very low pH of between 5 and 6, and a temperature of about 24 degrees before they're even going to consider spawning. And if you do get yours to spawn, then you need to make sure the conditions stay the same and nice and stable because the fry are very sensitive to dramatic changes in light. Overall though, neons are tough, hardy little fish. They're incredibly adaptable to different situations, and if you don't want to be breeding inside your community tank, then that is absolutely ideal. They look great in any tank, even ones which are really quite sparsely decorated. And while they can be a touch nippy with each other, they tend to completely leave other species alone and just get on with doing their own thing. Anywho, I hope you've enjoyed this little video, and if you're keeping neons, I'm sure you're enjoying them. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!